Panelized Podcast. Panelized Podcast. Right. 100 so this, episodes, baby. Yep. This is a very special one. It is episode 100, meaning that I have spent probably five to six hours times 100 of my life fixing all of the bullshit that all of you do, like breathing and eating and just <laughs> being there. But here we are, number 100. It's the last one. So everyone say goodbye. Yeah, we're going into retirement. I have a fun little list and a fun little PowerPoint, and it's going to be fantastic. A PowerPoint? This is going to be the worst and best episode we've ever done. First PowerPoint episode. It's not a game show. It's something worse. Anyway, we're doing an origin story. We're going to say a little bit about ourselves, how we met, talk about comics, how we got into comics, and then the PowerPoint. So, Jeremiah, since you dressed up for the occasion, why don't you say a little bit about yourself? Maybe what you do for money, what you do for fun. Born and raised in New York. I'm an upstate baby. I currently live in Syracuse, New York. I am a massage therapist by trade. And if you want to dig real deep, my spa was ranked number one in the world last year and number three in the world this year. Yeah, for fun, I like to go on hikes, dive into every aspect of comics. Comics are basically the biggest aspect of my life that isn't my job or my wife. I like that you mentioned your wife. I have no intention of doing that in my Fear next. Woo! Thank you, therapist Jeremiah. I got two dogs. One's called Leia. The other one's called Marley. And then I have a fiance. Her name's Jenny. When I'm not on here, guys, I sell cars. That's my thing. Not the number one most hated profession. It's number two. Pretty good. Landlord and then car salesman. No, wait. Uh, I think it's lawyers, then car salesman, and then cops. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So I am a glorified secretary by day and a podcast editor by night. Paneloids and two other podcasts because it's very expensive in this world to survive. So I have a second job. And yes, I also have two dogs and a wife. And I'm going to die in this chair with my head probably in a different keyboard because kind of tired of this one and i have a spending problem hi i'm dimitri i'm black so the next thing i kind of want to just go around the room here is how we got into comics i got into comic books a few different ways batman the animated series that was really the push into that world i had every action figure bought by my father and then i had uncle mike take me to conventions and i had his best friend mike give me just packages just like real bundles of comics so all of those things combined eventually led me into a store and lots of debt mental situation health issues that's for sure got a lot to unload on this question i'll start with spider-man spider-man was definitely the character that brought me in the 90s one that at least we grew up with and going to the comic book shop with kyle i didn't really pick it up then i was just like all right i understand it i liked it but reading it now reading venom by donna cates who kyle always said i fell in love with which i did that was like holy shit these books are sick yeah i kind of account pierre to the big push actually going weekly he used to drag me there and then like we would kind of be like oh here's wolverine he goes to hell oh here's batman and robin nightwing is now batman and like we slowly started to like collect and pull in from there and then it became a weekly thing of just like an actual pull list when we didn't know what the word pull list meant so it's kind of your fault pierre that was you buying though i didn't buy any of them when you were buying them yeah pierre just read them i just bought them all great yeah. situation there <laughs> Yeah. Was it Domino's? No, it was Pizza Hut. It gave you the first episode of X-Men, the anime mm. series. It was that. I might have watched a few after that, but it was mainly that one episode that I kept rewatching. You got me into it with, I think Miles was first. Yeah, I trapped you. And then it was Batman. Then it was New 52 Batman. So I jumped in on that and started to get weekly and make friends with the shop owner and yeah, fun stuff. And then I started dragging to make sure to conventions. Oh yeah, and the conventions every year. I think we went to a few in Jersey at that point. For me, I got into comics. My older brother liked them a little bit. Back in the day, not only did Pizza Hut give you Pride of the X-Men, which is that first episode, they also had a one through four Pizza Hut X-Men. Those are the first comics I remember reading, but they were not mine. The first comic that I ever got, I actually got Trick or Treating. And you still can get it today, occasionally at firehouses. It's Daredevil vs. Vapora, which is a fire safety comic. That was my first comic. I became obsessed with the idea of comics with the 94 Spider-Man show, with the 97 X-Men show. I'd get any comic that i possibly could get my hands on and then my mom bought me a spider-man encyclopedia book not a comic book it was just a spider-man encyclopedia book that makes and so much sense oh my god yes <laughs> yes and so i became obsessed with learning every facet of every character take in as much information about characters as possible and then just collected comics from there and then eventually got a job at a comic book store and then got a job at a comic book store and then got a job at a comic book store yeah so we'll stay on you jeremiah not necessarily the first book you got but the first series you recall collecting like from issue one or even if you just started piecing it together my first series collection was sensational spider-man so it was the ben Riley version of spider
Spider-Man. It wasn't the Scarlet Spider-Man costume. It was the Ben Riley like Spider-Girls costume when he donned that one. I remember when that series came out, I'm getting a Spider-Man number one. And then Spider-Man would actually relaunch the next year. But I kept up with the Ben Riley one for the 18 issues or whatnot that it ran. That was the first series that I collected. And then, yeah, I would literally just get anything that I could. I didn't have like full runs for a very long time. I had the weirdest piecemeal collection ever. It was Robin for a while. It didn't make sense. Ooh, Joker's Wild? <laughs> I had all of those with the little yeah. holographic card on it. Uh huh. I was like, oh, that's yeah. cool. It'll be worth something. So, but it was just, you know, everything was out of place. So it didn't really mean as much as started and ongoing from one through however long it went. But I think the first was that and then Miles and then Batman. You got me Batman number one. You were going to, and I told you not to. And then I had to hunt down a number one for a long time. I think even Jeremiah gave me one. I think that's one I have right now. I think so. So, yeah. I hate this because you're making me say Donny <laughs> Cates. So hot. Quite now i feel like you did this on purpose you knew where these questions would end up and you just wanted to hear me say donny kate's over and over so the venom series was yeah. probably the first one and then it just went on to collecting all of his series that i missed out on i remember reading things online completely legally with you though like walking dead and invincible and stuff like that oh yeah true, i know true, we did true. that we just didn't buy yeah. all of it i think we even went to the library and got like the compendium for i walking never dead. read invincible later on like i read invincible but i think i watched the show first and i was like what the fuck is this book about yeah forgot about that a lot of the shit that i read was just because you had them but walking dead was definitely what i was following i've always liked alternate universe stuff so anytime Time, like I've been picking up my own sets it's usually like something alternate so like the white knight stuff that was cool it's all mostly recent stuff other than like when batman was doing like time traveling he was like a caveman remember that yes you bought me an action figure from that i think it's worth like a little bit i have that one yeah. stored nicely in bubble wrap actually that was mm -hmm. such a sick costume he got lost in time so he was jumping around different time periods yeah there was like a pilgrim version of him pirate pilgrim knight and then yeah obviously the caveman there was one other western the thing. prehistoric one was sick though for people that don't know it look it up him wearing like a giant bat like a prehistoric <laughs> bat it's sick running around with the club i think my first collected was from uncle mike's best friend mike one of his bundles had a spy boy comic in it and i went from there and with everyone's assistance because i was pretty young collected all of spy boy by peter david which is why i always have like this soft spot for peter david because he's technically the first book i was like i need the next issue now that's one collection i'll always kick myself i don't know where it ended up i know i have number one floating around in one of my boxes i'm pretty sure signed but i had a complete collection at one point or at least to whatever point it was at but i used to love spy boy like that was my thing that's kind of obscure that's awesome i'm shocked. i don't think i've ever told you that yeah no you you have it. I'm like that, blown away right now. Yeah, that was my first real, like, I'm actually collecting. And then from there, even before me and Pierre were really going to the shop, and then before I dragged Dimitri in, when Fantastic Four did FF, I was actually having Marvel mail them to me. And then I realized... Oh, you had a subscription? Yeah, and they got damaged that way all the time. <laughs> so I realized that wasn't the way to go. And then Pierre was like, there's a shop around the corner from your house. And that's kind of how everything led from there. Yes, yeah, so I would say Spy Boy, and then in later years, more adult years, FF, picking up the older Batman Beyond miniseries stuff like that so next a real fun one which i think i'm gonna start because two out of four of us are intoxicated but i think i might remember best so i want to do how we all Jeremiah? met <laughs> Are you the intoxicated? <laughs> of course. I'm going to say how I met each of you. And then if you want to correct me, we'll go from there. So I believe I met Pierre. It was either airbrush class. Yes, we had an airbrush class together. Like we literally were painting with airbrushes. The teacher was in love with me. I made her mixtapes of classic rock. She thought I was the greatest thing ever. The class. educational system is fascinating. Yeah. So I don't know if that's the class that me and Pierre actually met in, but that's probably where we bonded the most mainly because he used to fuck up my paintings like he would just oh, throw yeah. paint at me i'm yeah. like what are you doing <laughs> yeah that's true great memories in that class i think we had science together we had a bunch science. of classes together i remember english. english they loved us but that was because no. <laughs> well okay in my yeah. head she loved us <laughs> i think she did she yes. wanted to love us we will get she... to those stories we weren't the best we weren't the worst 
wherever we met, me and Pierre had at least a dozen classes together, like a dozen, and it was problems in each one. And I would show up super late, and then me and Pierre, after I showed up super late, would just walk out and just leave, no matter what time it was, just leave. Like no one was stopping us. They'd be like, "Where are you going?" We're like, "Ah, we're done, we're done with today. We're done." Somehow we graduated together. I almost didn't. Gym class <laughs> almost fucked me. Is this a bad time to mention that I got the gym class hero award for my senior year? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> we would not change so we'd put our shorts over like our jeans and just go out to like whatever we had to do and then we would leave we would, oh, we, we would just we leave from. in the yeah. middle of gym class we'd be gone now dimitri yeah hey man i believe we also met in an english class but a year before i met pierre and third in that hottest class, teacher i've ever had him third hottest and in that <laughs> class dimitri did not do any of the work homework or even test and i 100 percent take credit for doing all of his work i passed him in that class he had no choice that was it i think you made me go on a double date with you dragged me on a double date and they were kind of weird and then we ended up talking about aliens and ignoring them and then they left and we couldn't remember when they left like we didn't have a conscious idea of like when we got ditched we had no idea it's for the best still from my perspective here jeremiah we met on the internet like all yes, normal people do now in this current age i found your tumblr i loved your tumblr we started talking you sent me hundreds of hero clicks yes back in the good old days when tumblr was a site that had pornography on it click the I dial was, i've been dragging you into shit ever <laughs> since i think you try to get me and dimitri into playing it yeah like, oh, we, this is we, a great game guys we would play on my bed all of us and they were all what you gave us like all of us were playing with the ones you sent us i was in deep with hero clicks it was bad the first time we ever met in person i met you and dimitri at a comic convention and the first time i ever met pierre in person was at your wedding where it was 108 fucking degrees hottest day of the year yeah and <laughs> yep. you got married on a beach i was Terrible terrified idea. going to your wedding because it was the furthest i've ever driven by myself and i've never had a car valeted before so i was like what the hell is going on well appreciate you making the trek to see me be sweaty the rest you of it valet oh. service you were with me he so. did okay okay i was gonna say i was like wait a second i would had to park my car i was like wait, what <laughs> so the next thing i just want to go into which you kind of mentioned jeremiah is kind of like how panelloid started and i don't know if all of you know this and i probably shouldn't admit this on the internet so when Tumblr was cool and allowed art, let's call it. My Tumblr, like every other, you know, 17 year old, was cars, sneakers, a picture of Spider Man, and a half naked girl. So that was my tumblr it was just shit that i thought looked cool well my wife i was dating then and that was a long time ago and she saw my tumblr and told my mom and like i remember this happening in like the driveway of onslaughted by like that's so rude you're dating her this and that so from that point i said well i'm gonna get rid of the naked girls and then i just was like i'm just gonna go one topic and that's what started just comics until i originally renamed it from whatever stupid name i had at the time to modern age comics which is how we met it was just a blog we did like a comic review and just posted fan art dimitri would help me like schedule the tumblr so like we'd have fan art fridays and a whole bunch of stuff i like wrote that. articles will it last and oh, i nailed almost every single one of those yeah no you had a lot of good ones i want to dig them up one day i think i have a way where i actually have them archived by like tags that i can pull them up quickly not just like search thousands and thousands of posts it's now called paneloids but it has all of the original oh. besides the nude models because i had to go and delete all of them but it has all of the original <laughs> posts from like everything we've ever done damn you know, i did not I realize that that is a little origin story of paneloids and the reason name changed for modern age comics was because the guy wouldn't sell me modernagecomics.com even though he wasn't using it and i was in contact with him offered him 500 dollars. he would not sell me that name so i was like you know what's best let me make up a name because when you google search it i'm number one because it's a made-up name there's nothing else like it mistake but from there eventually shifted from writing articles to doing in-person interviews but we mm. did get recognized at a con yeah we did there was a lot of great interactions but we've stuck with it and it's evolved into a podcast when it literally was just a blog like a traditional blog and now it's not a blog at all it's literally just a podcast now and a tiktok because that's a thing we should bring back the blog you know i loved writing those articles you know pierre was no contribution to any of it i think he helped me set up some pictures sometimes because we used to actually take a picture of all of our poll every oh, wednesday okay. like that was yeah. a thing yeah so that's the only thing i did you guys found me through that and i started contributing more and more and more and then eventually 
eventually was like pulled in. Yeah, that's how we all started. Should we give shout outs to the honorary members? My wife, who has carried backpacks through conventions. The pack deal. (laughs) She's been seen, you know, at multiple conventions. One of my mom's ex-boyfriends, Eric, he was with us a lot everywhere I went. Kind of like a bodyguard at one point. Jericho, we met him. At a convention Jericho. in Philly, Dimitri and Uncle Mike. We actually ran into him last Philly and took a picture with him. Really cool guy. He used to take tons of photos and let us post them all. And that was a big part of our blog was going to local conventions. So let's move on to everyone's favorite episodes out of all hundred. But let's do favorite non-interview and then favorite interview episodes. I loved the early stuff even before I was involved. When it was just you and Dimitri being mad at each other for an undisclosed amount of time. Now that was <laughs> pre-editing. Yeah, it was pre-editing. All- has been scrubbed from the internet yeah i enjoyed that a lot just because you guys' banter was so great i loved when we really got into the disney plus shows when they were first coming out we were hitting our stride really well with those every mm-hmm. time something came up hawkeye loki wandavision all those episodes i feel were great my favorite solo interview Apollo interview obviously but i feel as though my favorite interview that i've been a part of is the terry moore interview because i really feel we grasped what we were going to do from now on with interviews because the first few we were kind of just grasping at straws grabbing where we can and that one was the similar idea of just grasp what we can but we were able to have a conversation and a dialogue with him which made it easier for every creator we've talked to since Mm -hmm. in my opinion that's where that's where i lie i'm gonna shock you okay so favorite episode i would say any episode when we're like predictions i guess we did that a lot in earlier so (laughs) yes still do (laughs) Michi loves them all fuck all right. Well, my favorite interview is not an episode. It's part of our Lost Tapes where mm. Jeremiah interviews Bendis. That was See what day. I did there? It's not and Lost. Like it that. is on YouTube. It was that special edition and Jeremiah got to actually like meet me for real that day because he saw the levels of anxiety go like this and then like <laughs> this and like completely peaked out. And he was like, OK, so this is who I'm dealing with. <laughs> And I was like, Jeremiah, you have to do this. <laughs> yeah, You're the right choice. <laughs> special edition was two days. End of the first day, I was running around grabbing signatures and I was meeting you guys because I was spending the night at your house. I met you guys at the door and you come running up to, we got Bendis. We got Bendis. I'm like, well, yeah, you stood in line for four fucking hours. Of course you got Bendis. No, we're interviewing him. Oh, okay. We go back to your house. We come up with a bunch of questions. We're trying to figure out who's going to do it. You're too shit scared. You've got Dimitri reading the questions, but he wasn't reading them right enough. So you made me read them right. It's got to be you. It's got to be you. At the time, he wasn't God to me. And at the time, he was God to the two of you. Yes. And so we get there. We got five minutes that turned into 15 and a half. Yelled at you the first two questions. It was his handler's fault. His handler said, we got five minutes. We're like, do you want to preview the question? She looked at him for two seconds and said, oh, you're not going to get through the first one. You're fine. (laughs) First one in a second. That's a spoiler. And so we just kept going. And then when I got him, he wouldn't stop talking. And she's waving me down down to shut the fuck up i'm not gonna tell bendis to stop he had three other interviews lined up and all of them got pushed away we were the only people that got to talk to him that day i'm kind of proud of that fact that's awesome that's a good one dimitri of course man i should have bought equipment for that because it sounds like trash (laughs) you wanted to buy equipment and return it the next day like you were planning to go to best buy take out a credit card buy a bunch of shit and return it the next day (laughs) that's a great idea great idea i've never done that before if i was involved with that decision he would have ended up buying all that stuff i have zero doubts about that (laughs) all right so favorite interview i was gonna say cody ziggler showed up late for (laughs) i was late for it but after listening to it and you guys talking to him he just seemed like a really fun person but i gotta give it to my boy kenny porter kenny porter he's been on twice if you're listening i love you it's always been fun with him i particularly like playing the game shows that's like my favorite part of any episode that we're doing now non interview episode i'm gonna say the trivia episode between me and jeremiah yeah, yeah. trivia episode was fun i it can't get time yeah we'll definitely do more of those you know especially when news is drying my favorite episode i think was when you and jeremiah did it without me and i think oh. just solely because <laughs> cardboard version of you i wasn't having these thoughts in my mind while we were recording of like i'm gonna cut that when i'm done i'm gonna fix this like editing something that was mine but i wasn't in was so much more entertaining to like listen to and it was such a solid episode you both run your best behavior you both tried so hard because you heard how sick i was and then for interview obviously ryan stegman (laughs) 
I kind of figured. I've never yeah. been so nervous for an interview ever. The fact that he gave us the amount of time he gave us and we're just so like, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, I got you. Just this proves why he's my favorite. He's a cool guy. Yeah. We've had a lot of good episodes. We've had some that aren't so good where the audio is really fucked up because I didn't check my settings and I yelled at everybody else. But we've had some really good episodes and really good interviews. With that, let's move away from Paneloids for a second and let's do Ooh. funny stories. Now I'm going to start once again playing main character like I love to do. And I'm going to start with Jeremiah. Oh God, what are you going to do? So you mentioned before how when I announced to you that you were going to interview Bendis when yes. you got to my house, kind of left a fact out that my mother also greeted you at the door and she was in a nightgown and might have flashed you. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Was that a core memory that it was blocked on deep away? <laughs> and it's not there? anymore, it seems. Yeah, I'm having non-flashbacks now. Dimitri, hey, many, man. many stories amongst us. But I think for my 21st birthday, when that old woman in the neck brace fell asleep on your shoulder and slept on your shoulder for over an hour during some random concert that Uncle Mike dragged us into, I think that's my best moment of you. And I have a photo of it that I'm not going to show online in respect to the poor injured woman, but that was a fantastic scene. Strangest 21st birthday I think I could have had. Pierre, there's far too many. Painting murals on my wall, destroying the wall, then spackling it and then doing it all over again. If it's just racing around blasting music painting things on cars we shouldn't have or as you mentioned earlier in english class when we dance and danced and danced and almost got an a plus for dancing but some snitches in the class talk shit so in high school me and pierre would make videos and we try to make those videos for fun but we'd also try to make them for school because we didn't like to do school and all of our projects we would go up to the teacher and say well could we do a video instead of a presentation so we had to do animal farm and pierre you know what maybe i'll let you tell the rest of the story but we almost had an a and a few other kids were angry and they walked up to the teacher and they said they danced to come on Eileen for three minutes in costumes. Never once mentioned the book Animal Farm, let alone anything that was related to this project. And also, you are not giving them an A. The video's online to this day. I need a link now. If you look at Kyle's page and look under videos, you'll find it. You gotta scroll it. way back. The only thing Animal Farm related that we actually did was at the very beginning we mentioned the Ten Commandments and at the end we mentioned mm. the Ten Commandments. It was just it was like edit, one yeah. slide. One slide and then it just was me in a chicken costume, him in a pig costume that he self-made. He pink-faced himself and he had a pig nose on. And he had a pink shirt on and yeah, he just ran around, did random things. And, Come on, Ali. And it, it on the roof. The fact that we just played it in class, it was just incredible. People yeah. really sat there and just enjoyed it and were cracking up and just like, what the fuck that are you watching? Quiet. So everyone was like, Kyle's dancing? <laughs> yeah, he was a quiet kid. It wasn't really out of character for me. No. But still, at the end of the day, the fact that we put this video together. <laughs> and the uh, kid that snitched, his group, that kid's now a cop. Remember? Well, it wasn't a funny. It was like a bad day for me. <laughs> but we made a video. We just had Sour Patch Kids. Like a giant oh, I'm cutting this one. Yeah, this is good. <laughs> You finish the Sour Patch Kids, what do you have at the bottom of the Sour Patch Kids bag? Sour sugar. Two kids. We took that sugar, we dropped it on a table, and we made a video of me licking the sugar off the table. What it caused afterwards <laughs> was my parents to come stomping on Kyle's door. Basically, the cops were coming. They knew what we were doing and all this stuff. And my dad, scared, almost killed oh. Kyle's grandma. She was so confused of what happened. And we're like, it's just sugar. <laughs> we did line it up in a line. Credit oh, card. you cut it? Just, and... like, <laughs> we didn't... No, we didn't cut. We didn't cut we just lined it up and made it like a big line it wasn't the smartest move we were like uh, 15 back it was just like a joke we didn't realize what we were doing and what it would cause but it was the the day that i realized that my dad was lying to me about this cop friend that he had always <laughs> telling me that there was this cop friend anytime i'd get in trouble this is cop friends coming every time and at that moment i was like what he should be here by now <laughs> yeah i was like what cop friend told you about this like in the middle of the night we only posted that video like a few hours ago can i tell my favorite part <laughs> about all this story so i was dating melissa and pierre was dating one of her friends and when I say dating, it's loosely. And we couldn't quite make Facebook official, but my wife and the girl he was messing with at the time didn't really like that we said single on our Facebooks. So Pierre and I just put ourselves in a relationship just to get away from for the, the longest time. You were married, right? We were married for a long time, and I just remember in this whole ruckus, Pierre's dad was the biggest, tough, scariest. Like I was just grandma crying, it was just like this whole thing. And out of all of it, I'm sitting on the stairs like, oh god, like I really hope he doesn't have a cop friend. <laughs> Pierre's mom comes up to me and she goes, 
are you gay? <laughs> I'm like, like, what do you mean? I Change the moment. That what do you mean? She's like, Facebook says you're gay. And I was like, no, 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 no. It's just because the girls, what girls? And it's like, oh God, now I'm talking about the girls. Good times. Different time, long time ago. Yeah. A lot of the things all happened at Kyle's house. That's really all my stories. Like I used to throw batarangs at his wall and he'd be like, don't do it. And then I throw it. And then he'd spackle it, and then I'd throw it, and then he'd spackle it, and then I'd throw it. The only real story that I have at Kyle's house, I am much taller than your entire family. The shower head, it did not go above my nipple line. We had it lowered up purpose for us. <laughs> so funny. How will Panaloids end? You'll eventually get sick and tired of doing this for free. That's probably it. And then when it starts making money, me and Dimitri will get cut out. I expect nothing. <laughs> I just think your editing is going to take off and you won't have time for this anymore. That's what I think is going to happen. I no think he's going to merge into his computer and his chair. And he's going to roll around his house. <laughs> That's all he's or I just do. fire all of you. Yeah. <laughs> the Comic Pals featuring Kyle Panelwitz is what it's going to become. Weasel my way in with them so I don't have to do any more work. <laughs> I can't even blame you if you do. Have they responded? Wait, I'm the sorry. Our doppelgangers? Yeah, our, our doppelgangers doppel haven't responded. All right, and now I'm going to share with you some slides that I put together to hopefully embarrass most of you. All right, so here we have one of the first New Yorks that we attended. Pierre really learned how to wear a hat. <laughs> we were definitely young and all had some acne. No facial hair whatsoever in that photo. <laughs> No. <laughs> no facial hair. The gambit shirt. Hell yeah. Kick ass gambit shirt, though. We thought we looked cool, and yeah. Uncle Mike, our chaperone. Way back when, New York. Look how tiny Dimitri looks. Yeah. So, for those viewing the photo, just know that I'm slouching about half a foot. That was my heaviest. Not that it matters, but I was actually heavier in this photo than I am now. And yeah, I think this was the first time we technically met in person. Yeah, I believe so. Next. Genuine we're... smile there, Jeremiah. <laughs> I was so nervous to be touching him. You could see it in my face. So, the photographer was his aide that was mad at us. Yeah. And before she took this photo, she's like, do something. I did something thing but kyle's too nervous dimitri probably didn't hear her no nah, i probably Bendis didn't. did something so if you look through my wife's hair there you can see the original panaloids logo next photo just some convention pictures me and dimitri with dan slot me with mcfarlane capullo and me with snyder was that Showing before some you guys time. were stalking snyder yeah it was the start of it here's a more recent one know. part of me kind of mingling with stegman did not hear them say throw up middle fingers i was like i really don't want to it's not really it was my the last thing. thing we did at night though we were tired donnie yeah. looks like a fuck in that photo He's so, <laughs> cocky, but so cool. It's hard to explain. You want to hate him, but you can't. Modern Age Comics logo. So this Modern Age Comics logo here, it's actually the M and the A from the New 52 Animal Man logo oh, in a yeah. circle. I had a crude one. And again, to bring up Uncle Mike's best friend, Mike, his wife actually does that kind of stuff and made it nice and clean for me. Yeah, and that was the I logo. Pretty cool logo. I, I did not it. know you stole that from Jeff Lemire's Animal Man. That's kind of great. But yeah, just another old con photo that I saw off his Facebook because, you know, we don't live that close, but I remember seeing it years ago. Who is that? Who is that is that, Jesse man? Frisco dressed up as Bloodshot at Baltimore Comic Con 2016. He's a cosplayer. I don't know if he does it much anymore. I've lost contact with him. Decent dude. Oh, wow. <laughs> was from Twins! The convention. <laughs> <laughs> that Uncle Mike brought me to way back. I was 15, 16 here. And yes, I had long hair that was the same as Chewbacca's hair. But that's my embarrassing photo. Mm -hmm. Here's just some birthday shots. We all turned 30. Here's an old one of oh, Dimitri wow. and Pierre. Where, I think we were doing mini golf. We went to the beach. Just the three yeah, of us. You know, the angry bird shirt. Go that Dimitri. is an angry bird shirt. Fly AF. Here to call back <laughs> to the music video. Here's a selfie. Before selfies were a thing, we had to actually point the camera without knowing what it was taking a picture of. Me and pig face and uh, me trying to kiss Pierre, which actually there's more of these photos in existence than I thought. This was just the oh, best. No. Not really well, sure. Look at the glow up Pierre had. I mean, Pierre, you're a good looking I'm man beautiful. now. Back then you were not <laughs> and you know what though pierre pulled girls even then there's an old one of me and dimitri oh man i believe that's nice. his birthday the canadian was, tuxedos i'm not sure why we sat next to each other in the matching outfits but yeah nice. here's pierre hugging batman before he was batman nice this, that's a good that way a of that picture him. aged well that yeah, picture did. aged well <laughs> Here's a flash forward to Pierre helping me dress as he always has. And here's Dimitri crying into my shoulder. I was crying. Like just sobbing. 
just horribly right. sobbing. Oh, uh, fuck. Jeremiah <laughs> also sobbing. <laughs> it was just yeah, a random I'm, photo. I was crying. You're aggressively so crying. Aggressively oh, my God, crying. dude. You have no idea. It was bad. Yeah. Yeah. I have somewhat of an idea from that picture. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, light. I didn't think I would cry at my wedding, and then it was the worst crying I've ever done in my life. See, I think I will, so maybe I won't. Or at least yeah. you won't as bad as I did. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> I hope not. Uh, my Hello. 21st birthday that we talked about, this was also from that show. And my mother, you know, because that's who you hang out with on your 21st birthday, forced me and Dimitri to take this photo with these old women. I don't huh. want to touch them. This is a weird <laughs> follow-up <laughs> slide to that one. <laughs> you can Dimitri. see how badly you don't want to touch them, Dimitri. I don't want uh, to. Maybe oh. we just go back to the other one. It's a better time. Okay. Oh, now I can see why he got the ladies. All right. So this All is right. when Pierre used to drag me to the gym. I tried to be cool like him. It didn't really work. Here is me, my Blackberry, a bottle of water, and Pierre's tongue and nipple. Oh, wow. Where did you find that? I apparently posted a screen grab of when clicks the dial join Instagram to promote you on my slightly more following Instagram account. Look at the frames on Instagram. Remember the frames? You only do uh -huh. four by four. Look yeah. at me with 13 followers making a difference. It was great. Getting oh, great the times. attention of NECA. <laughs> and here are the last photo, my favorite photo. This is the first time we actually recorded together. This episode has since been scrubbed from the internet. It should. Where <laughs> are you, Kyle? It's when my mother had surgery and I had to live with her for two weeks. Oh. And she oh. also wasn't really in her house. So you can see I'm wearing a blanket because <laughs> I'm freezing. I love how Dimitri's in the same spot. I'm actually in the same spot too. That was just me swinging through the streets of New York. We've done a great job getting to 100, and we probably do less of a great job moving forward. You know, subscribe and whatever. I don't know. Thank you for being here. Panelized, Panelized Podcast. Panelized Podcast. Panelized 100. We did it. I know what you're doing you wanted us to say it so you could edit out the word anytime it came up no but that's pretty smart that's smart it's, as shit yeah that would help me a lot actually i purposely didn't say it because i was like you're not taking my voice recording you yeah, know i have tons of like raw Fuck. footage of me tricking you guys into saying things that i could kind of like put together to make you say whatever i want 100 episodes imagine what i can make you say yeah. this is weird it's a little weird jeremiah where did you get this little like speech <laughs> my top rated massage what it's my credentials <laughs> you were ready for it i know we were supposed to prepare yes i wore a suit wore it's our 100th suit. episode i'm <laughs> celebrating i feel like he's applying for a job and he got it yeah. Fuck. pierre do not eat the ice cream <laughs> yeah. Fuck. For me and Kyle, okay. the spending, like, at the very end, it's like, yes, and I also have a spending problem. <laughs> it's, it's like, okay. <laughs> like, the, you guys are going to talk us through it and help us hopefully get through it by the end of the episode. It's like Financial Problems Anonymous. <laughs> I think Jeremiah is a therapist, actually. Yeah. Fuck. And we'll start with Pierre. I did that on purpose because you kind of spaced out a little bit. <laughs> I was thinking, I was trying to think of the episodes... Man, these questions, I just wasn't ready for them. Yeah. Fuck. Oh my god, white people just look alike. <laughs> white people just look alike. Yeah. Fuck. Just all turn off our lights like it's an old sitcom. Just like slowly walk away from the camera. I gotta just, just end it all. Dude, this suit is so hot. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>